Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, welcome back. So today I I explain you how to solve the nonlinear advection equation or nonlinear equation. So solving Burger's equation. Let us consider, we know already, we have already derived the analytical solution. So we have already derived the breaking time when the solution break each other. And then we have already derived with the finite difference scheme. We have already shown that uh, some oscillation when we do the central difference. And then we have to use the upwinding or we have form also viscous form now. I do the same what I have done in the final difference. So now I, with the mastery method, I describe the same the scheme. So the Burger equation is I solve del rho by del t plus rho del rho by del x is 0. And so I take minus 1 to 2. The initial condition. So we, we already had derived the exact solution, rho of 0, x is equal to 1 if it is minus 1 for x to 0, 1 minus x if it is 0 to x to 1, 0 if it is between 1 to 2. So it means I have this domain here, so my i shall minus 1 to 2, so this is 1 here, so here it is, so this is a rho 0 of x, so it is 1 here, it is 1 minus x here, this is 0 here, yeah, this is our initial condition. So I have shown same into the, in the linear advection equation also, I have considered in the earlier lecture, same type of initial profile. So there what we have seen, if it was, a, if this is a constant, so the same linear profile, transport, it doesn't change anything. If A is a positive, if A is negative, same linear profile transport to the left. But now this is a nonlinear case, we cannot get exactly the same situation here. I now express, so it is more or less the same reputation of the linear case, therefore it is not much difficult to understand, express in Lagrangian form. So here what we get dx by dt is equal to rho and d rho by dt is equal to 0. In discrete form, so I am, it is just like a repetition of the linear advection equation xi by dxi by dt is equal to rho of i d rho i by dt is equal to 0. So in the linear advection case, we had the constant a, but here it is the function of rho i. It moves with every the discrete value of rho. And now explicit Euler scheme is 
x i n plus 1 is equal to x i n times delta t times rho i of n and rho i of n plus 1 is rho i of n. So, the so part is 0. And now we have the same we have described in the final, uh, the, now it is a ALE formulation. We write this equation del rho by del t plus rho del rho by del x is 0, or I split that into two parts del rho by del t plus rho by 2 del rho by del x plus rho by 2 del rho by del x is equal to 0 here. So, then I can write this part on the right hand side del rho by del t plus rho by 2 del rho by del x is equal to minus rho by 2 del rho by del x here. So, now it is in the Lagrangian form. So, what we can write that dx by dt is equal to here rho by 2, d rho by dt is equal to minus rho by 2 del rho by del x discrete form so in every discrete point so here it is dxi by dt is equal to rho i by 2 d rho i by dt is equal to minus rho i by 2 del rho i by del x. And now explicit Euler so it is x i n plus 1 is x i n plus delta t times rho i by 2, rho i of n plus 1 is rho i of n minus delta t times rho i by 2 del rho i n by delta x. I hope you are able to read it. Again, let me write it back this part in the read so explicit Euler I have the better space here so this I put here x i n plus 1 is x i of n plus delta t times rho i by 2 rho i of n plus 1 is equal to rho i of n minus delta t times rho i by 2 n. So, here it should be n here. So, this is also n. This is also n here times del rho i n by delta x. Yeah? This is our ALA formulation. And now what we have that, so again we have viscous burgers, viscous burger equation. So there what we have, so del rho by del t plus rho del 
rho by del x is equal to some epsilon del 2 rho by del x square. So, epsilon is uh, positive. So, remark if epsilon tends to 0, the solution of Burger's equation tends to solution of Burger's equation. Yeah. So if epsilon is very small, then we get exactly, or if it is zero, we cannot put zero, but should take very small. And then we get the solution to of the original equation. So I will so I will explain it a little bit why the epsilon helps us to simulate numerically. So now again, what we have our Lagrangian form. Form of Burgers. Equation we have d rho by dt, it is exactly the same as this one d rho by dt is equal to rho, d rho by dt is equal to not 0, yeah, because in this case we had 0, but in this case what we have, we have epsilon times del 2 rho by del x square. So it is exactly same as advection diffusion equation. You remember in the advection diffusion equation, we had rho here and we had our d here. But in this case, we have now, we had a, which was a constant velocity and the epsilon here, but now instead of constant velocity, we have here rho i, discrete form, So the discrete form is d rho i by dt is equal to rho of i, d of rho i by dt is epsilon del 2 rho i by del x square. So, explicit Euler scheme. Now, once we know compute the partial derivative of second del rho by del x square, del 2 rho by del x square, then this is just the, the time dependent ordinary differential equation. And now, in the explicit Euler scheme, what do we get that? rho i n plus 1 is rho i of n plus, so first we have to, sorry, here it should be dx by dt is equal to rho, not d rho by dt. So here, yeah, dx i by dt is exactly the same here, not d rho by dt here. And now we have to integrate this, this is with the explicit Euler. So, integration of this one is again xi n plus 1 is xi of n plus delta t times rho i of n. And the integration of this part is rho i of n plus 1 is rho i of n plus delta t times del 2 rho y del x square. So here again, we have to write also the discrete form of the initial value of initial condition 
रो आई ऑफ जीरो इफ एन इज इक्वल टू जीरो देन वी गेट रो आई ऑफ जीरो हियर लाइक ओल्ड वैल्यू तो रो आई ऑफ जीरो इज इनिशियली आई एस आई एन आई एज रो ओल्ड रो आई ऑफ जीरो इज इक्वल टू वन इफ एक्स आई लेस इक्वल टू जीरो वन माइनस एक्स आई इफ जीरो लेस इक्वल टू एक्स लेस इक्वल टू वन जीरो एल्स तो नाउ वी हैव एवरीथिंग अप टू डेट तो वंस वी हैव डेट देन वी कैन सॉल्व द बर्गर इक्वेशन the burger equation will give it will develop the shock after certain time it is not like in a linear case so now so what we have here in the first part it is same as the advection diffusion equation so here there is nothing we have only we have to move so we just change the position from the old value to new value we just move with the With the value of rho old of i, which uh, when n is equal to zero, so I will have rho new and rho old. So rho new will be at x new will be x n plus one, and x old will be x n. Rho new will be rho n plus one, and rho old will be rho n. So here, what we'll have new position I get just old position plus. So here the plus. So old position plus delta t times rho i of n, and my rho old is equal to rho new will be equal to rho old. So this year there is nothing, no need to do any partial approximation or partial derivative. But once we are in the ALA formulation, so what we get that we have to compute the partial derivative of Rho, the first order partial derivative at every position, and then once we have computed that, then we have now we have to update the new value as the old value plus delta t times the right hand side. In the case of viscous form, what we have that so on the right hand side, so the convective part. So one advantage of this Lagrangian method is that. your convective part is gone so you you don't have any problem to approximate this when you solve the viscous form so you don't have to worry about the upwinding here yeah so the upwinding is somehow is already this uh, this uh, advective part is already hidden by the lagrangian formulation and now it is just Right hand side is epsilon del to rho by del x square, and then what if you see the difference between the ALA formulation and the viscous form? So that here what we have now we don't have a first order derivative here. Now again, just remember same as our linear advection case. So in the linear advection case, so we had the central difference scheme was giving. The oscillation, even with the linear case, but now this is a non-linear. It is even worse. The central difference scheme will give you the oscillation. Then we have to compute with this with the upwinding scheme. Yeah. So upwinding scheme is that we just follow the direction of rho. If the rho is positive, if it is positive, it is coming from the left. We just sort out the neighbor on the left hand side of the position. If it is negative, it is coming from the right. We just sort out the position from the right. You remember in a finite difference again, we have if it is coming from the left, I was taking a backward difference i i minus one. Here I am taking all the left neighbor. If it is coming from the right, in finite difference was the forward difference. Now I am taking all the neighbor which is on the right hand side. And now this upwinding scheme is a first order, and it has Again, the numerical viscosity, a numerical diffusion. So the now here, what we can add that. So like in the advection diffusion equation with the upwinding case. So add plus 
epsilon del 2 rho i n by del x square. So, this part is the numerical diffusion in upwind scheme. So, once we add this numerical diffusion here, so what we get even with the central difference formula we get the we get the stable solution where the epsilon is capital order of delta x. Yeah. So then if we add this part here, even with the central difference scheme, we get the stable solution. So the difference between viscous border form and uh, the with the numerical diffusion form is that in the viscous border form there is no first order derivative yeah there is no first order derivative there is only so here one more that i need to add this uh, so i am always missing some coefficient here so i have to add here delta t times this epsilon here so this is a white stock delta t times epsilon times del 2 rho by del rho i by del x square at time level n. So what I have that this epsilon may not be the same as that epsilon, but here we don't have any first order derivative, and here we have the first order derivative somehow. What we have done that we have additionally added this part. Yeah. So if you commit small mistake, if you have small error to approximating this part, then your solution will be smooth out. Yeah. But here we don't have that advective part, that 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 part. So here there is no. So only the the small error will be computing of the second order derivative. There, here also we have the same. But if you make little bit error, a little bit, if you have small error at one time step and you have the loop for whole time step, so in this case you accumulate the error, accumulate, 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 then finally what you get, you get diffusion. Yeah. So without that also, what, why you get the diffusion? In the beginning, you have a nice solution, and then what will happen that when the time evolves, so at first time step, you have a small mistake, a small error, and the second time step, even another error. So now you go on accumulating the error one after another, and then so now again remember that we need CFL condition. So we have seen that in the finite difference, we have the CFL condition depending upon the delta x and the delta t. And now, so what we will have that here CFL condition means that I choose delta t such that this particle, if it I move, it will not overtake this one. So it can be, it should be always behind that. So that is the physical interpretation of CFL condition in our case. So any particle, if they move in this equation, so they will not overtake either this will not go back here or this will not go further here. So that is the physical interpretation of the CFL condition. Now, so I think, uh, so we should continue with the next lecture, our MATLAB uh, simulation. So now if I start with the MATLAB simulation, I will not be able to, to show you all the result. So in the next lecture that we just uh, saw the MATLAB simulation, and then we can use also even different initial value. We can take a sine function, and every solution, whatever, either you have a linear or very smooth, will develop the shock. I think I have shown you in the finite difference 
scheme, so it will be the same in final in this method also. So I keep all this in the next uh, lecture. I don't remove. So then I will implement this part. I will implement this part without artificial, without numerical diffusion, and I will implement this part. So we have three type of equation, and then we'll check with the exact solution how far we are from the numerical solution. So I think we stop. It is a little bit early today, but uh, we will continue the numerical implementation in the next lecture. So thank you.